to Jesus Christ. The feast day of the Dormition of the Mother of God is a feast which our friends in the Protestant Church will never understand. And they will never understand it because their understanding of all that encompasses every portion of the life of Jesus Christ the mission on which he came sent from the Father to reconcile a false and broken humanity to himself. The entire perspective which they bring is what is contained within the Bible. It begins there and it ends there for them despite the fact that the Bible speaks constantly of the many things that are not contained within it, despite the fact that the Bible tells them to keep those traditions which have been passed on orally to them by the apostles, despite the fact that the Bible says that the church and not it is the pillar and the ground of truth, for our Protestant friends, there is no account of the death of Mary in the Bible and so it might well as never has happened. And certainly it's not the sort of thing that a church service would be held to commemorate or to remember. And truly, because of this, they miss so much of the richness of the faith which has been handed down to us. It is not uncommon to hear a Protestant say, Mary's not important, she's just another woman like any one of us. Of course, I've yet to meet any other woman that carried within her womb the Son of God. So she's not just like every other one of us. No, indeed. But what they miss when they choose to ignore Mary is that the love that the Orthodox have for Mary is not for Mary herself so much as it is for Christ because to love Mary is to love Christ because to understand the importance of Mary is to understand Christ more fully you see in the Protestant world you might think Christ just dropped onto the earth and 30 years later popped up and started teaching but this is not the significance of the Incarnation. When we commemorate Mary, we commemorate her in a very particular way which gives witness to the full humanity of Christ. When we refer to Mary as the Theotokos, the God-bearer, we give witness to the full divinity of Christ that Mary did not birth a creature, she did not birth a common man, but she birthed God himself, incarnate in the flesh. But if we only focused on the God part, we would lose the humanity of Christ. And this is where remembering both the nativity, the birth of Mary, and as we do today, the dormition of Mary, is incredibly important because if we do not understand that Mary is herself, as our Protestant friends would say, just another person, then we don't understand that Christ took the fullness of humanity from his mother. And in this respect, we find that the Orthodox understanding of Mary is different than even the Roman Catholic understanding of Mary. We celebrate the nativity, the birth 
of the Theotokos because she was born into the fallen and corrupt world as any other one of us were. Every part of humanity, the fallen nature of man, the ancestral sin, she was born into. Whereas in the Roman Catholic beliefs, they celebrate the immaculate conception of Mary that she was somehow conceived free from sin. Well, this is not just like every one of us. And there's a, a, a very old saying from the, one of the church fathers that what's not assumed can't be redeemed. In other words, to redeem humanity, Christ had to assume the fullness of humanity. Not humanity less the state of sin that Mary is somehow exempted from under Roman Catholic theology. And in the same way, whereas we commemorate today the death, the falling asleep, the physical departure from this world of the Virgin Mary, the Roman Catholics commemorate the Assumption where Mary does not die, but is taken alive up into heaven. Well, that's not, number one, that's not the teaching of the ancient church. Number two, it's certainly not consistent with the understanding of Mary containing the fullness of humanity. Because one thing we know about humans is we die. We are subject to physical death. Now, Thanks to God, thanks to Christ, we have the promise of eternal life. And so it's really not right to say that any body who's passed from this world and now lives with Christ is dead. They're certainly not. The saints aren't dead. They're alive in Christ. We believe the promise of eternal life. But their physical time on this earth has come to an end. And Mary's physical time on the earth came to an end. She died as every one of us died. And in fact, Christ on the cross, being subject to human nature, died a physical death to be raised three days later and redeem all of mankind. But we cannot just ignore who Mary is or we distort who Christ is and this is the most important reason that we in the church always remember the Theotokos because through her we understand we understand who Christ is that he is fully God. She is Theotokos, the bearer of God. But she, he is also fully man because he took humanity from his mother and her humanity is as our humanity. She was born as we were born and she died as we died. And all of that was assumed by Christ that it may be redeemed for the salvation of mankind. So brothers and sisters, as we return to this liturgy, let us remember not with sorrow but with joy the falling asleep of the Theotokos, knowing that she will be translated to life by he who came to give us life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ.